How's it going, Ham Fam? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Today on the Ham Radio Crash Course, we're going to take a look at the TN07 Go 2 antenna, specifically designed as an HOA antenna. What does that all mean? What's this all about? I'm going to talk about it right now. Thanks for watching. I bumped into Bob from TN07. Goal with this antenna was to finally come up with a solution for the HOA folks. Um, constantly they're being bombarded with reasons why they can't have an antenna. We have designed an antenna that you can either leave permanently set up in your yard, disguised as a birdhouse or whatever, leave the birdhouse on one end of it if you sure. wish, or it's portable, we have a bag that it comes in that you can uh, take it with you to work parks on the air. Uh, at the Huntsville Ham Fest a couple of weeks ago, and he was debuting or displaying his go-to antenna, which he has designed to be a HOA antenna, meaning that it's, it's more on the stealthier side. And I'll explain what that means as we talk a little bit more. But some of the details on this antenna, this will do 80 meters through 60 meters. This antenna is designed to handle 100 watts of single sideband output, meaning you click your radio, you talk into it, and it'll handle 100 watts. So most of your base stations like my 7610, 7300, you get the idea. Plus it'll handle QRP, no problem. It has a 25 watt max for digital modes, and I would put Morse code somewhere around uh, 25 watts as well. The antenna ships in a canvas type bag. It includes two copper rods, which looks like they're cut from uh, ground spikes. So if you're, you know, an eight foot ground rod that you might drive into the ground for your home AC service, you get a matching transformer or the kind of gray cylinder box where the magic is happening. We'll talk about that more too, don't worry. You get a 17 foot vertical extending whip and then you get a length of wire that goes from one copper rod to the other copper rod. This is what Bob referred to as a shunt fed vertical antenna. Looking this up, because I did have to go look this up, basically this was a design that a lot of broadcast stations used to use where it was kind of an angled wire that came off of a tower and different adjustment points allowed you to get the appropriate match, the resistance match you were looking for, for the frequency you were transmitting on. Interesting thing with the shunt fed system is that Bob's antenna, the TN07 go to, gets two SWR or lower all across the ham radio HF bands, which makes this a really compelling antenna if you were interested in doing ALE. ALE is a system that was adopted or adapted from military systems. Basically, it allows you to use a computer to connect to your radio and quickly hop through multiple bands to find the one that allows for direct communication between two sites or two locations. I've done a video on uh, PC ALE, which is a software title that's available that you can download online. I'll post the link, you can check it out. But uh, just keep in mind, it's, it's a little bit heady to get into, but uh, if you're in that niche market, looking for an emergency antenna, this might be a compelling thing to use because it's flat SWR pretty much on all the HF bands. So I may not have said it explicitly for, for those that are a little bit newer in ham radio, this means you don't need a tuner. Uh, two to one SWR is totally fine for your base station radio or your QRP radio to effectively go portable with or just run at home. Now the bag it comes in is very handy It all the things come in and ride in the bag and it's all very good. However, this antenna is about 10 pounds, which puts it in the POTA portable space and definitely a home antenna space. I wouldn't necessarily put it on the back though and take it for a soda hike. Further, those ground rods do need to be driven in about eight inches or so to get a setup for this antenna. To drive in those rods, it does come with a post driver, which you can see here adds to the weight, but it's not heavier than the ground rods themselves that come in the kit. I did have one issue. The more I was driving, the paint, or that's epoxy, started to chip and it deformed the back, but it's made of metal, so I'm not worried about that failing. With that said, Bob of TN07 said, recall all the post drivers. So everybody who has a my go to kit gets a brand new post driver that he's going to send to you and every subsequent kit that he sells is going to have a modified post driver that will not deform on the back end. So got to love that fast turnaround and thank you Bob for doing the right thing. Appreciate it. With that said, it is an incredibly fast antenna to set up. I think maybe five minutes maximum to get this antenna up and on the air. It is very, very fast. So the first thing you do to set this up, you slam the first ground rod or mounting spike 
in with the post driver that comes in the kit, about eight inches or so. You slide the matching transformer onto the pole with the two eyelets. And then you use the little hanging lead with the copper clip. You clip that on the pole and then let that sit uh, just right there. And bring it up to the top, you know, so that it's just about four inches or so from the top. Now, once you have that done, there's a length of wire that you connect with a eye hole terminal connector and you just unscrew the top piece of metal. It's a little connector, it's a connector screw. Just connect that in tightly and then drag that wire out uh, until it's fully taut and not a lot of pressure, but fully taut. And then take that other copper ground rod, cut down ground rod, and then drive that in about eight inches. The horizontal wire is going to be towards the top of that pole and if it's eight inches down, it's gonna be about a foot and a half, maybe closer to two feet off of the ground. And you want that horizontal line to be taut. Not tight enough that it's gonna break, but taut, not hanging, not flapping in the wind. Then you put the vertical um, extendable whip, telescopic whip on, stretch it out all the way, attach your feed line, you're done. Once you have the coax fed, run it to your radio, that's it. No tuner required, switch the bands to your heart's content, get on the air and start playing. It's really that fast to set up. Bit of break in the action. If you are enjoying this video and you find it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. It tells YouTube that this content is good and should be in front of other hams or ham curious. And I appreciate it, thanks. Now when Bob tells me things like it's got an incredibly flat SWR, it's incredibly easy to set up, handles about 100 watts, 25 watts digital, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is probably too good to be true. So I took it home and I put it through a bit of a stress test. And for me, one of the most stressing things that I can apply to an antenna that uses some kind of a matching transformer, right, like that little gray box, part of the shunt fed vertical system, is to do Winlink. Now, if you've used Winlink before, you'll often find that you're jumping around looking for a good node that you can talk to. And while I have a good couple of nodes that I can generally always make contact with, I thought I'd go ahead and find new nodes. So I experimented jumping around and connecting to multiple nodes around the 40, 80, and even a 20 meter node for Winlink. And again, Winlink is a system where you um, use your radio to connect to another radio to get email from, Winlink email system. I had about 10 emails once I found a node that was working, 10 emails to download, and I just let it go for it. I ran it at 25 watts exactly. The, bo the body of the, the gray matching box did heat up, but it never went above uh, 106 degrees, and I did take my little thermal gun out there and test it. I also did run it at 100 watts on FT8, and I did that for uh, three or four contacts. So while I'm not recommending you go beyond 25 watts, I did, and it seemed to be okay. This likely would void your warranty if you purchase this antenna, so don't do that, um, don't do that at all. In general, I found that my ambient noise floor using the go-to antenna was lower than that of my Step IR horizontal beam, which seems pretty good to me. Um, there are probably mitigating factors around that. The step IR is a little bit higher up, but not as high as it should be. And I have the go-to setup exactly as it is prescribed in the instructions. So that likely helps a little bit. But I'm unsure what kind of dark magic is going on uh, within a shunt fed vertical. I know that generally vertical antennas at my home have a higher noise floor. So maybe there's something else I'm unaware of. I did look up a couple of scholarly articles on the subject of a shunt fed vertical and I'm still researching it. As mentioned on Bob's website, the TN07 GoTo antenna has been left outside during harsh winters and has no problems in that space. You can leave it out in the sun as well. So this literally is something that you could deploy in an HOA and what that looks like. So remember I mentioned that the two rods are spaced appropriately apart for that horizontal wire. Well, when you're not activating, you can just take the vertical uh, telescopic antenna off or just bring it all the way down. And there are two caps that go onto the ground rods that you could put a birdhouse on or some kind of decorative art thing that would then disguise it as far as like your HOA was concerned or something along those lines. Basically, it blends into the background a bit. Copper looks good, you know, little kitschy lawn ornaments and stuff like that often use copper as a material that they're made of. And the idea here is that you could just roll up that horizontal wire, hang it on the matching box, put the little bird house or bird feeder on the, the rod that's sitting there, and it largely just kind of disappears in the background. 
In fact, in the kit, you get a little bag. It has a Lucite cap with some glue and some extra screws for mounting the horizontal line to the transformer body. I, I'm saying transformer a lot. I don't know that you call that a transformer in a shunt fed vertical, but it is like what I know the most if thinking about an an un un um, that kind of based antenna for an end fed. I know I'm using that term, but hopefully if that's the wrong one, you're just interchangeably uh, referring to it, what it should be called. Uh, Bob does refer to it as an IM D, which is an impedance matching device. So I feel like I'm okay in calling it a transformer, uh, but I'll try and call it IM D from now on. The go-to antenna sells for $499, which I think has a lot of R&D packed into it. So I think that's kind of why the price is what it is. It comes with everything you need, including coax, in this case, 50 feet of coax RG58 from the Wireman. For those of you interested in this antenna, the thing to keep in mind here is that it is very simple to set up. This is an antenna that is for someone who's gonna go portable or they just don't really wanna be bothered with running a tuner or having a vertically adjusted loaded antenna where you have to tap it out in different spots, like uh, think of a Wolf River coil, something along those lines. If you wanna change bands, you just change bands on your radio and you're done. It is two SWR or lower across all the HF bands to mention that again. So for most people, it's just gonna be fine just setting it up and, and going to town with it. Again, I will state that it's probably not soda portable. It is much more friendly for POTA parks on the air operation or just whatever portable operation you're doing. It's great at home. If you are in an HOA, this is likely something that you can just kind of run up vertically, do what you gotta do, pull it back down, and no one's even gonna notice. You could probably even put it in your front yard and most people won't even notice. You could probably put a flag on the tip of the vertical, uh, the, the, the telescopic whip, and no one's probably gonna bat an eye. Tell me your thoughts on the TN07 GoTo HOA antenna. I'd like to hear them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching the Hammer to Crash Course. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. If you have not already, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 6 p.m. every other Wednesday for Ham Nation 73.